Blizzard's World Championship Series was organized this year to focus on creating a singular storyline with great games and a true StarCraft II world champion. It was also intended to cultivate talent in the North American and European regions amongst the dominance of South Korean players. Not everything has gone as planned. The round of 32 concludes today in North America and Europe, and 12 of the 14 qualified players of the North American round of 16 are from outside of the continent. Only Evil Genius's Suppy and Ace of Scarlet have made it through on home soil with a last chance for EG's Huck later today. The lone United States representative Zerg Suppy advanced with two huge wins in Group D over Axiom, Korean Terrans, Hart, and Ryung, one of which included a nearly 40-minute back-and-forth battle with Hart to kick off his impressive run. Base trades and mistakes from both players led to a bizarre final game, with Suppy's hero Ultralisk racking up dozens of kills in the final battle to secure victory. Idra and Ghosty Yerzer were the final players eliminated for the United States, with American Transparent Polt and EG's Zerg Revival taking the final spots. Europe fared better than North Americans, securing at least 13 of the top 16 spots in the round of 16. While everyone look, looked on to the heavyweight matchup between the superstar Grubby and EG Stefano, new Navi signing Baby Knight showed us why he shouldn't be overlooked, taking out both players on his way to winning the group. Millennium's Feast did the same, first with an impressive win over former GSL champion MMA trying his luck in the European qualifiers, followed by a cheeky Protoss vs. Protoss battle with Mouse Sports Mana. We spoke to Feast regarding his wins over MMA and Mana and his chances into the round of 16. I'm here with the WCS round of 32 Europe Group H winner Millennium's Feast, who won top spot in his group and has now advanced to the round of 16, awaiting who we play in the next round. Congratulations, Feast, on the wins today. Uh, you took out the Korean former GSL champion MMA and Mana, the European Protoss, if you played so many times on ladder in previous tournaments. I want to go through the games. Uh, the initial match against MMA, you used two proxy builds in uh, the games that you played. Why did you decide to go that type of strategy? Well, I think right now Terrans are very strong because the medivac boost and uh, just held bats. So I try to, to be aggressive as soon as I can. And if the game is not... Um, like sometimes I can get an advantage or just win the game straight away when I go for a proxy cheese. So yeah, I just take my chances because I think right now against Terran is very hard. Um, yeah, that's the main reason. Would you say the Terran is hard because of Medivax or do you feel the Justin matchup is going like that right now? Well, yeah, Medivax, but also Hellbats. We used to like have big armies of the Yelots, but because of the Hellbats now, it's very hard to even use them. And as a Protoss, since you need splash damage, like Colossus or Eye Templars, you have to go, you have to make some Zealots because you simply don't have the gas to make just Talkers and uh, Colossus and Eye Templars. So, yeah, I think uh, right now Terran is stronger than Protoss. So, yeah, I play like that. So, so I think it's the best way. <laughs> Your winner's matchup was against Massports Mana, player that you've met in many, many tournaments before and on ladder, um, you know, being, of course, in that European region. Uh, what was your method going into the game? Uh, you had a kind of back and forth PvP, low, very low scoring, uh, not a lot of units. Yeah, um, he was very aggressive on those games. Like each time he at least went for it three gates before I even, well, I don't think he even tried to take an expansion. So, yeah, in the whole best of three, didn't take an extension, so it had to go fast. Um, on, the three on the three games, I tried to go for, for some kind of macro games, but uh, it was so aggressive that in the end, it ended faster because uh, I didn't feel comfortable taking my own second base because it was so aggressive. So, uh, it's kind of weird because Mana is a macro player, so I was a bit uh, surprised. But, um, hey, it ended up all right, so, yeah, it's all good. You've now made it into the round of 16. Uh, 16 players are eliminated. You'll probably know the groups in just a little while after the matches finish up today. What do you think about your chances in the round of 16 and, and on? Well, I must say the round of 32 was already quite hard. So, um, even though it's going to be the round of 16, it's probably going to be... I think as hard, so I think I can make it through. Yeah. 
In that round of 32, you had one of the few groups with Korean players playing in it, of course, uh, MMA, who you beat earlier. Uh, while, and then at the end, uh, at least 13 European players would be qualifying to the final 16 spots in the round of 16. While in North America, only two spots so far are going to North American players with at least 10 South Korean players in the final 16. What do you think about the disparity between Europe and North America and how the WCS is set up right now? Well, I know that a lot of players are really um, angry about that because they feel like uh, the Koreans are taking all the money. But uh, I must say, yeah, Europe, uh, some Koreans, they tried to, to qualify. A lot of them didn't make it through. Uh, it might be because of the ping as well, because they had a high ping. So, yeah, and for, for America, I just I kind of feel bad because in general, they, I think their, their skill level is lower than Europe. And because also the American server is closer to the to Korea, so it's like they really had a hard time. I, I think I think for Europe, uh, Koreans didn't well, weren't really a problem. Like you, like you said, there were only three players. But uh, yeah, for America, it's really hard. But uh, I think it can only make them better to just play with the Koreans. So yeah. I don't really know what to say about that, really. I think uh, I think I'm just lucky to be in Europe, to be honest. <laughs> well, thank you, Feast, for the interview, and good luck in WCS Riot Europe round of 16. Thanks. See you. Thank you. While the Western continents wrapped up with the round of 32, Korean superstars Flash Parting Life at Innovation fought in GSL's Group of Death. Only two came out alive, and to most of the StarCraft world's surprise, STX Soul's Innovation was the man to come out on top. Innovation's Terran overwhelmed KT's Flash in a manner similar that Flash over, had over him just a month prior at MLG Dallas. He followed this up with an impressive win over Flash with an even more impressive Terran Berserk victory over MLG Dallas champion Life. The group finished off with a final battle between former teammates Parting and Life, and much of the reason that a group existed to begin with. While Life got the better of Parting to start the day, Parting made sure to finish it with to hold his promise true, advancing to the next round and eliminating Life for the second straight time in the GSL round of 16. That's it for StarCraft 2. And for a final update from last week, we reported that we would have an interview with ESCA founder Craig Levine on the recent scandal between the company and their Bitcoin controversy. Uh, later last week, we found out from Craig Levine that he would no longer be doing the interview with us and that they would hold off comments until after doing an inner investigation within themselves and to take care of their own community. We hope to have an update sometime in the near future. Leia? So, Rod, you were totally wrong about your predictions for the group of deaths. Do you have any wrong predictions about what's going to happen this week? Uh, you know what? I don't think I should talk anymore. <laughs> uh, so... So probably not. Um, uh, European American round of 32 is going to be finishing up today. We should see brackets for the round of 16 uh, in those games. You know, I'm going to make a prediction that I think is going to stay true. I think we're going to have a good amount of Korean players advancing to the final eight in New York City in just a few weeks. I cannot see the lone two American Canadians, Scarlet and Suppy, and maybe Huck later today, doing a whole lot of damage considering each of their situations coming to the finals. Thanks, Rod.